Welcome to the Hear My Heart broadcast where I talk about the matters of the heart. You can't understand a person without getting to the root, which is hearing them. I am your host, Tiffany Rochelle, affectionately known as the People's Cheerleader. Here's something I want to share about me. I'm an author, a speaker, a heart and a motivational coach, and I'm so excited that you've tuned in and we have the opportunity to grow together. I'm here to encourage and motivate you to be the best you ever. If you're feeling a little stuck or stagnated or you're having a hard time getting over some things, please know you're not alone and that you've come to the right place and you're listening to the right person to help you through that. So let's dive into today's show of Hear My Heart. Here we grow. Hey, how you feeling? Hi. Oh, there you go. Now I hear you. Now I hear you. You can see me too, right? I can see you and I can hear you. Uh, just some backstory on me and then I'll let you have the floor here. My name is Danielle Brizant. I'm a speaker, writer, and presenter. I'm based out of the Midwestern uh, region of the, of the United States. I mm -hmm. currently live in uh, Marion, Iowa. Mm -hmm. And my story really begins not the year I was born, but the year I almost, my life almost came to an end. Uh, it was the year 2012. I was in a near fatal car accident. Mercy. Okay. I went into cardiac arrest wow. and I actually stopped breathing after I suffered my traumatic brain injury. So it's like two things happened with me, near fatal car accident. Mm -hmm. I black out, mm -hmm. suffer a traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. And in the process of blacking out, I also went into cardiac arrest. Mercy. So when the officer found me, mm -hmm. they had to, and I just did an interview out of Florida, uh, a podcast out of Florida with the officer who saved my life. Um, Stop Michelle, it. Uh, yes, Where Michelle, about is he at? Because I'm in Florida. Where he at? Oh, it was a she, Joanne Glenn. She Where's does the survivor of brain injury. She's out of uh, Naples. I, I have to ask her. That, if this Naples, that's out country. west. It's two hours from me. Okay. okay, I think I think that's where she is, but she may not be in. I but she's in Florida, <laughs> and when I did, we just did an interview mm -hmm. uh, together. It was our first podcast together with the officer, uh, Michelle Omar. Her and I, we're our friends to this day. We'll be friends for life. I have a life because oh, of this woman. So wow. yeah, she had to perform CPR on my unconscious body, yeah. and they she got to me, so it was a delay because she had to get to my body. Okay. So they, they restored, she said, I started breathing on my own it, within about a minute and a, and a half of organ failure, because I, I was not breathing for about three minutes, and they were nervous that everything starts to, sure. at four minutes, everything starts to shut down in your body. Right. You have to have some oxygen. So they were breathing for me, mm -hmm. and they didn't have a, a respirator out there. It's like uh, the scene of the scene of the accident, there's no respirator, so they had to keep, the CPR kept me alive. Uh -huh. So I started breathing on my own. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, I do, every time I hear that story, it's like, wow, I had to ask her questions. I'm like, okay, can I ask a question now? I know right. we're we're the ones getting the interview, but I have one more but Girl, question. you talking about my life. Yeah. I got questions. <laughs> yeah, she, we met. So I knew that story. I knew I had gone into cardiac arrest because she told me when we met and became friends uh, and she was telling me about my accident. But, like, every time I hear the story, there's one more question. I'm like, okay, I forgot to ask you that. Like, when we met that person, it's like, yeah, so uh, I went. I was. When I went. Did that happened. 2012. I was 24 okay. years old. Okay. She's okay. 24. I had just turned 24. I thought I had my life planned out, uh, but destiny had different plans for me than the ones I had made. Uh -huh. Fast forward, because I can. I'll if I keep going on with the story, we'll be here two hours later. And no, then, I know how to pull your coattail. Oh no. no. <laughs> I'm just gonna say so from there I'm gonna let you ask but jump in here in a second but like after uh they got me uh in the ambulance and I started breathing on my own I went to two different hospitals uh one just uh the hospital nearest to the accident and then I had to go to a level one trauma center and then uh I fully regained consciousness because I was in and out the doctors didn't want me coming back into consciousness too soon fully because there was a lot of swelling on my brain with the traumatic brain injury. So they wanted me unconscious for a little bit. So 
I'm not sure what was the coma and what was medically induced, but I fully regained consciousness in rehabilitation. And that was at a brain injury recovery center about a hundred, hundred miles away from where I lived. And I remember the night, I remember the night I was, just, I was in a room. This is where I'll always remember this night. This is where I fully. I want to know about this night. Yeah. Come on, tell okay. me. I want, Cause this is what you remember, not what you were told. This is what no, you. No, this is the night I fully, when I like from then on, I can fully remember things. Like I can remember a whole day. Okay. So this, okay. this was the night I fully be, was able to do that again. Cause before then I just was in and out, in and out, mm -hmm. but I fully regained consciousness. Mm -hmm. like, A normal human being. Sure. In the middle of the night, it was about 1 a.m. I opened my eyes and I look around and I was restless. I'm a restless sleeper. I have too much energy. My mom's right. Okay. And okay. they didn't want me tossing and turning because I had the brain injury. So I could have injured my brain that was still healing. Mm -hmm. So they restrained me at night so I wouldn't keep moving around. Okay. So that's how I came to it. Okay. My my wrists and my ankles are both restrained to the bed and I'm underneath an enclosure wow. over the bed. So it's like a tent, like, yeah. like you're a little kid need a crib, only it's upside down. So an upside down <laughs> tent okay. that's over your bed uh -huh. and the enclosure so you can't fall out of the bed. Uh -huh. And then my wrists and my ankles are restrained to the bed. Uh -huh. And that's how I open my eyes. That's so just my luck, right? Like that's how I open my eyes and I'm like, what in the world i have no idea where i am okay. i just start screaming and a nurse comes into the room she's like she just calmed me down she didn't get she couldn't get into anything because i was just like just just rambling just screaming she's like calm down calm down and then they give me something and I, I just i'm not i'm out and then i wake up the next morning and just i'm just we all been tired, but there's no way to describe the utter exhaustion somebody who's had a brain injury will feel. Sure. I just imagine the most exhausted you've ever been like in your life times three. Okay. And okay. imagine having just fallen asleep after being that exhausted mm -hmm. and then having somebody just violently wake you up. Mm -hmm. That's how you will wake up no matter after 14 hours of sleep. Okay. After a brain injury, your body is just exhausted. Like you're okay. just craving because that's the brain trying to heal itself. So it wants sleep, okay. but you can't just sleep all day. You have to do things. So like you're exhausted. So they wake me up in the morning and I had woken up in the middle of the night, just confused and tossing and turning. So I had lost some sleep on my own because I just, I had awoken and then the nurse about, because this is something that was key in my brain injury uh, rehabilitation center. One of the leading ones in the country on with life uh, in Ankeny, Iowa. So when you're recovering, they won't let you, even though the body wants sleep and your brain it craves that sleep, they're not going to let you sleep all day. Okay. Like they want to get you back into normal, into the habits and the routine of a normal adult. So Mm -hmm. You're allowed to sleep for eight hours and then you got to wake up. And they woke us up at 630 every morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll never, and they would not let you go back to sleep. Like when the nurse said you had to get up, you, you had to get up. And yeah, like she flipped on the light. And I did, I wanted, I was so exhausted that there were tears mm -hmm. stung in my eyes. I was so exhausted. Mm -hmm. And How so soon after all this happened, you were able to walk? Three weeks. Okay. okay. And then... That day I fully awoke. I didn't ask anybody any questions till the later that night after dinner. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop talking here. I promise. And then I call my aunt and she tells me the whole story. Mm -hmm. She's like, she didn't even know I could talk. And they didn't, she didn't, the family didn't know I had a fully, they hadn't had a chance to call my family and tell them I had just fully regained consciousness. So she didn't know I could talk yet. Mm -hmm. So she's like, oh my God, Danielle, are you talking? Right, oh right, right. When I saw you, you were in touch. So like, and she tells me the whole story because right. I didn't want to call my parents because I was so afraid that I may have been in some type of trouble. I don't know what had happened. This accident and happened where? In Iowa. Okay, okay. Where okay. I live in the in the state of Iowa. Right, right. And I my my mom's from New York, and my father uh, my he passed away in 2020. May he rest okay. in peace. My okay. father was from the Caribbean, 
Wow. So my mom's family are New Yorkers. And, you know, I knew that I knew I could get the straight story from them and like no sugar coating, no nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. I thought, but I didn't want to call my parents because I was sure. still afraid that I would have been in some type of trouble. So I called my aunt and she gave me the whole story. And here I am. And then, and you know, here. we can get into how the journey and my recovery and, and my I wrote a book about all of this. And now I'm a speaker and presenter and. Yeah, I'm truly on the journey to my dreams because okay. I'm grateful okay. for that accident because it even it almost ended my life, but it allowed my life to start all over. Okay. And so you're I know you said you're an author and you're a speaker and all that. Do you do anything outside of that? Or is that oh, what you do full time? Oh, I'm I still have a day job. I, I like my benefits and that steady paycheck. I'm not giving that up. I work for a wonderful guy. I work for a wonderful guy, but this year has been phenomenal. My business is like quadruple, more n- more than quadruple, like because everything has come back. I started in 2020, so most of the speaking engagements I did were virtual, and now as after COVID, stuff is starting to come back in person, and I'm getting a lot of interest, and my inbox is full every day, so I'm excited. My like I like I just would you ever want to do this every day, or full time rather? I should say. I, I could, but I just work for a really great guy. Like uh, my regional manager, I'm in sales okay. and he's a great, we're friends and okay. he's just a great guy. All of the, I like all my supervisors and it's really hard to find great people to work for. So I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to keep writing that out because they <laughs> know what I'm doing. They know what I'm doing. They know my backstory. So as long as I have about three to uh, four weeks of, they allow me the time off I need to speak. Okay. So there's no reason for me to give it up because they, mm-hmm. I can just take the time on. They allow it. Uh-huh. I'm the number one salesperson at the company. And like, like, okay. And they're like, okay, yeah, you, we want you. So you yeah. do what you got to do, That's but you're sweet. coming back. <laughs> I, I'm not mad at that. I always just, I'm always curious of that to find out if coaches, speakers, um, or anyone who has had some kind of traumatic situation in their mm-hmm. life are they still holding a full-time job or what they're doing, making sure everybody understands healing? You aren't going through this alone. Is that their primary or is that, yeah, if they're doing that all together, just the coaching thing, or if they have a nine to five also. So I just always is curious. Yeah. Cause I, I I'm a speaker writer. And so I speak, I write, I present, I don't really, I do coaching for my friends. I give them a life plan. I'm like, okay, this is what you need to do. I'm very good at when you can, when you're in this industry, you can just kind of see like yourself, you can kind of see where people fit and like, you need to do that. Stop wasting time. You have a, no, I don't give away free advice do, like that. I, I that. do that <laughs> only for friends. I never will charge anybody. Cause I don't have, I could not do it for a stranger. Yeah. I need to know the person because like, yeah. So I, I, I'm not in, I'm not in coaching or consultant speaker, writer, presenter, and I do media, but I love to talk. So I do, I'm a frequent guest on podcasts. I'm on television, like wherever, like I do what I need you to do. do your own podcast because you like talking. So yeah. I could not. I don't think anybody would want to listen to me that much. Like, girl, <laughs> see, that's the problem too. You need guests on a podcast. I would be talking. The guests would. There'll be no guests. So just me. You yeah. ain't lying. Like, no, you no, ain't lying. Like, listen, one yet. thing's for certain, and another thing is for sure. We talked 14 minutes, but you did all that. I just like, ooh. <laughs> so you yeah, I warned you. I was trying to give you the backstory, but like, okay, I'm gonna let I'm gonna shut up now. And then I'm just really blessed. And like my book talks about oh, cool. how to be on the journey to your dreams. And I love I did some research on your podcast and I love it how about people can overcome all about overcoming and affirmations and positivity I girl you go girl I love it that's why I wanted to just be here I looked at my kind of oh I have to do that tonight I'm like yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna do it I can't I'm Your chemistry is it. amazing I'm trying to tell you for what you have explained to me that you have been through in a transition of life where you had you were you were out you know and for you to come back and you're thriving the way you are I think you're amazing I think that, oh, is, so, I kid you not. that, that is beautiful to me because I kid you not. I'm just, I think we've been talking. Well, I've been listening. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. I'll show it's, it's, no, 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 no. I don't want you to. But I'm just saying, in this process, I think I just done smiled. I'm like, dang, my face hurts. But I've been yes. smiling. You know, <laughs> you're saying yeah. your energy, I think, is amazing. That is so, oh, so, you. so cute. So you discovered after you recovered your full healing, that's mm-hmm. when you discovered, hey, what? What would you say is your discovery? After I got healed, what? Okay. 
So the medical recovery was the easy part for me, like uh, the emotional, mm -hmm. the professional recovery took much longer and it got, and I wasn't easy and I got to a very dark place. I became suicidal because okay. I, I last all, I, I had no researchers. I couldn't work for a year. I had to move, give up everything in my apartment, my car, everything. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do anything. Go back home with my parents. Sure. My sister didn't even want to share the room again. So I had to sleep on the couch. Wow. And I had nothing. I had a full, like at the time of my accident, mm -hmm. I was just selected for one of the most prestigious scholarships in our state. Wow. I had just been named a 2012 principal scholar. And I had a full oh. ride to study for my bachelor's degree. Uh -huh. And my bachelor's degree was going to be in business management. I wanted to be a corporate buyer and I was going to play on the corporate ladder. Very ambitious. Go make $100,000 a year before uh -huh. I turned 30. I told everybody. Right. So like that was the plan. And then fast forward, traumatic brain injury. I'm on the couch. No job, no apartment, no car, nothing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My, it's just like, I'm like, what is this? Like, yeah. This is not a life that's worth living. And I couldn't even find a job. My parents are tough love, the old school, tough love, black parenting. You already know what it is. They're like, okay, you're not feeling sorry for yourself. You're going to get back up there and you're going to just make something of yourself. Once again, it doesn't matter what you've been through. My, my father, God bless him, in particular, had a conversation with that's me. That's the Jamaican, right? That was, yep, from yeah. Barbados. Yes, because yeah. I was telling him I felt unhappy. And he's like, well... Until you do something with your life again, you deserve to be unhappy. You feel sorry for yourself. That is honest. And it, it made me cry. Like, it's just like, and then my brother helped me find a job. And getting back into the workforce is what eventually saved my life. Because I had something to do every day besides feel sorry for myself. And fast forward, uh, I got back on my feet because I had income coming in. And then once I was back on my feet, I'm like, okay, what did, what did dad say? He's okay. like, I needed to chase that dream again. He's like, okay. you had all these dreams before your accident. Now you don't even dream anymore. You don't think you wow. can do anything, but I'm like, okay, wow. now it's time. So that's why I say in my book, and this, this is the journey for everybody. What's the book called? Uh, Maximizing Your Potential, How to Start the Journey Towards True Happiness in Life. Mm -hmm. And this is what the journey looks is like. you jumping? No, girl, I brought this. I brought this thing. No, no, no. I brought that copyright. Uh uh. So, this is what the journey towards true happiness looks like for everybody. It starts with achieving a goal. Okay. Once you achieve a goal, you find your passion. Sure. My passion is I love to speak. I love people. I've always been like this. I could never shut up. Okay. So, you achieve a goal, then you find your passion. And once you find that passion, Mm -hmm. You discover the dream. Okay. Once you discover the dream, you chase that dream for the rest of your life. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm chasing, I'm chasing my dreams and I could not be happier. And I am so blessed and fulfilled. That's, so that's the journey for everybody. What's your, what's your hot topic or what's your hot takeaway from your book? Okay. My hot topic is happiness is a journey. Okay. It's not an ultimate destination. Everybody says, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to fall in love. I'm going to meet the Mr. Right or, or yeah. Mrs. Right. I'm going to mm -hmm. do this one thing and then I'm going to be happy. It's just, that's mm -hmm. not how happiness works. Okay. It's a journey. It's a journey of self-discovery. You have to discover yourself. You have to know who you are, what you're good at, what your, what your weaknesses are. Sure. It's a journey of self-discovery mm -hmm. and it starts with achieving a goal and finding a passion Okay. and discovering the dream. Okay. Is there anything in your book that teaches us how to find happiness? Well, I go through it. I'm just very, like I said, it's not a long book. In the book, I'm I just think, giving reasons for us to go ahead and to get and to by, it. I anything, think what I'm what we doing now, I might as well go in and keep this because you did a good job talking. So I don't even I don't think we have to even go on over to the other side. This is great right here. <laughs> Oh, so we don't even have to do a shoot another interview. Oh, I'm done. Yeah. we're gonna do oh, this. You can, but you're gonna have to edit this. Sure, I'm gonna have of to edit this down because I, I'm talking way too much. Like, this is gonna tell be me like, what I'm gonna do with my stuff. The host. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it involves you. You do what I do. You know, host. The, that's what that's what happened to me with the other girl. She's like in New York. She's like, okay, no, honey, I don't have time for no meet and greets. I'm busy because she also has a full time job and she has her podcast. So she's like, on <laughs> when I count to five, you go. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. In the book, I do have a couple of like self-discovery. I have a 
a test in there, a self-discovery test in there where I say people need to find out like what they're good at. And I go through things about falling in love. I go through like, that's a myth. Like there's no Mr. Right or the one. No, that's a myth. Okay. Falling in love, just like true happiness. Like if you truly love somebody, Okay. It means, and I have a definition for that as well. Like okay. when you truly love somebody, that means caring about a person mm-hmm. as much as or more than yourself. Okay. That's how you know you're in love with somebody when you get to that level of care about a person. Well, Jesus, I guess out, I love a lot of people then because I, I just yes. got well, a you lot got of care. A big heart. You got a big heart. If you love them, you care about them as much as, your, as, much as or more than yourself, yeah. you love them. You love them. And there's a, there's not to be a romantic love. Like we love our there's parents. Yeah. Different so, but levels it, of love now. Exactly. And if, you're, and if you're talking about the true, the romantic love about that true person, mm-hmm. if you get to the point where you have a partner and you get to that level where you care about them mm-hmm. as much as or more than yourself, mm-hmm. that's when you'll know you love them. Okay. And it's about compatibility and shared values. It's not any, most people nowadays, are just, they fall in lust. Like you see these shows, The Bachelor and like, mm-hmm. that's lust. That's mm-hmm. not love. That's right. like, no, I don't even want to get into it. Like if you, like, it's like <laughs> loving a person, like is, it has to be sustainable. Sure. Like, sure. And it's about compatibility and shared values. Uh-huh. And I've been with my boyfriend now, um, Oh, we're going on six, going on seven years. Six years is in October. And it's just like, I love him and gets on my nerves every other day. But it's just like, I love the man that he is. He is such a good man. And he's responsible. He's honest. And that's so hard to find now. So I'm going to, we're going to work through because of these things. Uh We're going to work through. I told him we're stuck with each other. We're going to work through our disagreement. Would you get married? No, I'm busy. Okay. I'm sorry. I, everybody asked me that. I was like, no, you know, like I'm not having no kids. I'm 35. I'm not, I didn't, I never, my, I never wanted them. I'm just busy. And I don't think, I don't think I have the patience to be a good mother. Um, really, to be honest, uh, that's my mother. Oh, I'm just on marriage. <laughs> I know, but I think I'm going to adopt. Like when I, 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 when things calm down, I want to give a child that doesn't have a home. I want to give them a home. And I used to mentor kids in college. So I just want to adopt some older kids and nobody wants older black kids anymore. So like 12, 13, adopt them, mentor them, send them through college. And then, yeah, kind of like Josephine Baker, create my own little family there. Cause somebody needs to cry when I die. That's what I tell my brother. Like, like I, I just, somebody, I want a tear. You can like, you can go on with your life. You better just, cry when I die. <laughs> somebody, somebody's got to cry. Just like, I just want, Two tears, at least, from somebody. No, I need a whole <laughs> waterfall. Like, as big as my Batman cup is, I need all that coming from everybody's eyes. It's not I'll, just I'll, somebody. No, I'll take, I'll take uh, we remember, oh, uh, tough love uh, for us, my parents. So I'll, yeah. I'll take it. I'll take some tears in yeah. the eyes. But just somebody's got to, somebody's going to want to do that uh, yeah. when I die. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. And I feel it'll, be, it'll give a lot of good to the world. But. I'm not having, physically having a baby. Because no, I'm beyond that. Okay. And in my stage of my life, and my boyfriend has two grown kids already. He's divorced. So yeah, yeah. He's the one. I'm not doing this again with anybody. I'm, I told him, like, we're stuck with each other. I'm not, it's work. Relationships are work, as you know. It's work. It, take, getting to know a person when you, and then truly getting to know a person because who you get to know at first is not exactly who they are because everybody has their best foot forward when they meet somebody. You see the best of that person. Then you, after about a year, you see the real person Uh and then you meet the family and you got to meet the parents and you see our parents, like we bury three parents together. It's just like, no, we're, we're not, no turning back uh, for us, but like, we'll work through it. But like we work through (laughs) our disagreements, we give each other our space and we're adults and we come back together because he's a good man. I ain't mad at you. If it works for you, baby, it works. And he's a good man. And I think I, I'll be like Oprah. I'll get I get engaged and then we'll be happy at that. Like Oprah and Stedman. That is me. That is my model. Like I an engagement. Mad at you. Okay. That yeah. is the Danielle model right sure. there. Oprah. You an engagement with no kids. And mm-hmm. like, um, she goes around the world doing all her things and her businesses. And yet that's me. Mm-hmm. Well, I ain't mad at you. Daniel. you all right with me. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yay. Uh, 
tell me this, since we here, we here, and you done told me how I'm going to do my job on my show. Girl, you let me have it. <laughs> tell me this. How are we reaching you? How do we get in contact with you? How do we follow you? How do we get your book? How do we get to you? So uh, I'm everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. Social media, I'm on every platform, everything. Mm -hmm. I've got like a, up to like about 20,000 across, like combining mm -hmm. all up the followers now mm -hmm. or the influences. And I, I often write for the newspapers and I contribute articles because I'm a writer mm -hmm. as well as a speaker. So the best way to find out anything about me is my website, daniellebrizant.com. Okay. okay, good yeah, stuff. The best Social way media. To just start there. You can okay. find all the platforms and the link. Just start there. Because okay. Danielle Any Brizant, social media? All the social media. What is your handle? Facebook, Twitter. Nobody's on Twitter anymore. So like, it's Oh, there's just, plenty of people know. still on Twitter. It's, um, <laughs> and my handle is, I think, at speaker, at activist speaker writer at Danielle Brizant. But just, just start, first you're going to have to learn how to spell my last name because it gets okay. a lot of people because okay. it's French Brizant. Okay. So if you can get to daniellebrizant.com, okay. start there. Spell it. How you spell it? So Danielle, D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, uh -huh. and then Brizant, B-R-A, Z as in zebra, A-N-T. Okay. So I will be Danielle Janae, my middle name, Brizant, on Facebook. And okay. then my website is daniellebrizant.com. Okay. So and Facebook how, how is your whole name and on you we find you on your website. And you gave me another one. That's on what? Didn't LinkedIn. You? LinkedIn. And I, I have a blog on Tumblr, but nobody's reading blogs anymore. So like that's that's that. And I'm on Instagram and all that, but just I'm not that cool. So I'm not focusing on getting a lot of followers. I'm about to play with you, Danielle. I'm about to say it's you and your honest tale. Girl, leave me alone. <laughs> oh, this was fun. I'm glad. I'm glad. Danielle, I'm glad. I swear to you, I'm putting this out. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing uh, this, the meet and greet and the show. This is it. Yeah, right? that's, that's what the last, that's what my, <laughs> one of my, little, I told you she did it in New York. So this wouldn't be the first time. She's yeah. like, okay, as long as you're ready to go, I'm, like, I'm always going to be ready to go. My mom said, I don't shut up. I came out talking. You can. I actually believe that. If you yeah. if you ready, you ain't got to get ready. So, hey, <laughs> you you are ready, okay? <laughs> I'm just <laughs> mad I didn't have all my lighting right, but we're going to make this work, and I know how to no, tweak No, you can edit it down, girl. That's why I say. I know how to tweak that, so we can go ahead. Oh, and you're cute. You, you huh? good. You don't, have, you don't need much anything. You're cute. Listen, no, nah, let me tell you, I ain't cute, baby. I, I'm beautiful. Monkeys and dogs. Okay, no, well, okay, <laughs> like, okay. You're beautiful. I'm cute then. I'll take that back. You're beautiful. No, I'm listen, cute. No, I can't I'm call cute. you cute unless you just want to be a monkey and dog. See, that's that's the point that we say. We say if you're cute, if monkeys and dogs is cute. So you ain't gonna call me cute. You can call me beautiful, you call me pretty. Oh no, babies, monkeys, dogs, and babies with the chubby cheeks. I ain't gonna do that either. They're gonna you're be beautiful. beautiful. They're really cute. handsome. What are they all doing about that? They're cheeks. Oh, oh my God. They're cute too. Monkeys, dogs, and babies. I ain't doing it. I'm not calling no cute, man. <laughs> cute. I just, well, actually, I have called. Yes. Cute. Like you have to. When you see a baby, yeah, nah, cute will come out your mouth. I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing uh -huh. it. Daniel, I'm this grateful for you. I'm so grateful for you. Oh my God. Well, has it been a half hour already? It has. It has. Wow. I'm done. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well i should i'm done for sure like because there's no more time left this was fun i appreciate you coming in thank you so much this was